Okay, so you should have your state lab review packets open. This is the very last lab, the New York State lab that we did, and I want to make sure that we review it because, as you know, Part D of the New York State Regents is all labs. So it's really, really important that while you're studying your boot camp review packet tonight of all those things that you need to know, that you also review this state lab review packet. This is the last of the four, and that's really at this point, it's crunch time. These are the two things that you should be studying, the boot camp um, review packet and this state lab review packet. So let's get started. We are on the Relationships and Biodiversity Lab, which is the last lab that we did. Um, what we did in this lab, we looked at organisms with similar structural or molecular similarities. So we looked at the leaves, we looked at the seeds, and then we looked at a cross-section of the molecular structure of what it would look like under a microscope on that piece of paper to see if they had scattered bundles or circular bundles. In order for a species to survive, it must contain variety, diversity, so biodiversity, life different, different forms of life. Proteins and enzymes are produced as a result of an organism's genetic code sequence. So we know that the nucleus contains the instructions for producing proteins and then these instructions are given to the ribosomes and the ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. If we change the genetic code of the protein, then we change the protein. And we have many different proteins in our bodies and they have many different functions. The genetic code is carried out as follows. DNA gives the instructions to the messenger RNA and then the messenger RNA um, to the transcription RNA and then an amino acid is formed. And we use the universal code chart to help us do that. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. It's important that you know that. We can use chromatography to separate a mixture based on um, particle size and we can use gel electrophoresis that uses restriction enzymes. Remember, restriction enzymes cut the DNA at certain points and then the DNA is placed in wells and then the fragments move from the negative pole toward the positive pole with the smaller fragments moving the furthest because they are the lightest. And then from that we get similar banding patterns and species that have similar banding patterns suggest that their DNA is more closely related and that they may um, have evolved from a common ancestor. And lastly, you have to know biodiversity increases the stability in an ecosystem. So let's get moving. To demonstrate techniques used in DNA analysis, a student was given two paper strip samples of DNA and the samples are shown below. The student cut between the C and the G in each of the shaded areas in sample one. So the student cut between the C and the G here, the C and the G here, and the C and the G here because that's where we have CCGG. And in sample two, they cut between the shaded areas TAAT. Okay. The action of what kind of molecules was being demonstrated when the DNA samples were cut. So I just reviewed that on the first page. This is restriction enzymes. You need to know that restriction enzymes cut DNA. Identify the technique that was being demonstrated when the fragments were arranged on the gel model. Well, that gel model refers to the gel electrophoresis. And that's where the molecules travel from the negative pole to the positive pole with the smaller molecules moving the furthest. 
The results of this type of DNA analysis are often used to help determine what? One, the number of DNA molecules in an organism. Two, if the species are closely related. Three, the number of messenger RNA molecules in DNA. Or four, if two organisms contain carbohydrate molecules. Well, you should have picked out already that it's if two species are closely related because we look and match up the banding patterns. State one way that the arrangement of two samples on the gel model would differ. Well, let's go back and look at our... So this has one, two, three, four. So this has four bands. And this one has one, two, three, four, five. And this has five bands. And not only that, um, you can see like they have different size bands. We could count these like we did on the biodiversity lab. This has one, two, three, four, five. This has five. This has more than that. So they also have different size bands. So let's go back and we can say, um, what sample is that? Sample one. So sample one has four bands. See how I'm very being very brief, direct, and to the point. Sample two has five bands. I do not need complete sentences. This is not the English Regents. And they both have different size bands. Okay, moving right along. The DNA of three different species of birds was analyzed to help determine if there is an evolutionary relationship between the species. The diagram shows the results of this analysis. Identify the technique normally used to separate the DNA fragments to produce the patterns. So here are the bands. So once again, this is another way of asking you gel electrophoresis. The chart below contains amino acid sequences for part of a protein that is found on the feathers on each of the three species of birds. So here's the amino acid sequence for species A, B, and C. State one day way that this data supports the inference that these three birds may be closely related. So these are the same, these are the same, these are the same, 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 same. Look at those. So other than this one sequence, they are nearly identical. They are all nearly identical. So there's only one difference here. State one type of additional information that could be used to determine if these three species are closely related. Well, we could look at the structural or molecular characteristics like we did with the plants. We looked at the seeds, the leaves, and then we looked at the molecular characteristics. Okay, next question. R, S, and T are three species of birds S and T show similar coloration. The enzymes found in species R and T show similar similarities. Species R and T also exhibit many of the same behavioral patterns. Show the relationship between R, S, and T by placing the letters 
in the corresponding top of each branch. So we, we see one thing how S and T are closely related, coloration. But R and T have enzymes that are similar and they have some of the same behavioral patterns. So they're giving us information showing us two ways in which R and T are closely related and one way in which S and T are closely related. So R is the main um, is the main species and then T and S are both compared to R. So that's the main branch and we know that T is more closely related to R because they share the same enzyme and the same behavioral patterns and then S shares one characteristic the same. So that's how we would label that. All right, I tried to put a bunch of information in one page here. Yours is a little bit more spread out, but I wanted to be able to talk about it all at once. On the regions, you're probably going to have to do some coding. So you're either going to have to do some mRNA base sequence, or you're going to have to look up and fill in some amino acid sequence. So one thing that we have to make sure that we know in, is that in messenger RNA, we have to know that A, right, A pairs with U and T pairs with A. And of course you have to know that C pairs with G. Oops. Now technically, if they give me a partial, I can figure that out. If you look here, you can see that A paired with U and T paired with A right here and looking at this one and you can see that C paired with G. So you might be able to figure the, this, that out by looking at other things that they gave you. However, I have seen questions where they just say here's a line of code like this one right here and they say what's the RNA base sequence? So you don't have any hints so it's in your best interest that you memorize that in messenger RNA, A pairs with U, T pairs with A. And of course, C always pairs with G. So let's fill this in. So you know that T is going to be with A, G is with C, C is with G. T is with A, G is with C, C is with G. A is with U, T is with A, A is with U. C is with G, A is with U, G is with C. G is with C, T is with A, and A is with U. So that one's done. Now down here they want you to do the amino acid sequence. So you're going to look up the three bases. So this is GGC. So I go to G then I go to G and then I find GGC and I see that it is GLY. Then I go to ACG, ACG, and I see it's THR. Then I go to UAU, so UAU, and I got to be careful here because there's two different ones, and it is THR again. Then I go to GUC, GUC, and I see that it is VAL. And the last one is CAA, C-A-A, and I see that it is G-L-N. So according to these amino acid sequences, which two plant species are most closely related? So I'm looking at the amino acid species, so I'm looking at the last lines of each of these. So GLY, they all have, this one doesn't have GLY, these all do. 
THR, good, TYR, oh, TYR, that's this one, VAL, they all have VAL, and HIS, only two of them have HIS. So let's look. All right, so this has one difference, these two, nope, two differences, GLY, THR, then this is the same, no, nope, one difference right here between A and B. B and C have two differences, C and D, no differences, so C and D, and they have no difference. Okay, moving right along, let's talk about chromatography. Paper chromatography can be used to investigate the evolutionary relationships. Leaves from a plant were ground and mixed with a solvent. The mixture of the ground leaves and solvent was then filtered using a toothpick. Twenty drops of the filtrate material that passed through the filter were placed on a spot on a strip of chromatography paper. This procedure was repeated using leaves from three other species of plants. So one way that I would do this definitely different next year, I would use four separate strips for each um, species that we tested instead of putting them all on one like the lab told us to because you know that the columns kept running into each other. So next year I'm going to put each one on a separate strip. Um, so what happened was we saw the separation of um, the colors. And it says, state one reason for using a new toothpick for the filtrate from each plant. So they used um, a different, and so that basically, why are we using a different toothpick so we don't have contamination? So we put drops, we put an actual drop using a dropper on the paper, they used a toothpick and they wet the toothpick and then dropped it, you know, touched it to the paper and then wet it again and touched it to the paper. They did that like 20 times, which takes too much time. It's easier to use the dropper. State one way the four strips would most likely be different from each other after being removed from the beakers. So the colors would be different. four different species. And the amount of color. Would be different. So some might have more pink, while others might be have more blue or more yellow. And there's one more question in this section that says, state how a comparison of these resulting strips could indicate evolutionary relationships. So the more similar the color pattern, the more closely related they are.
All right, let's look at some more DNA stuff. Base your answer to question 15 on the portion of the mRNA codon chart below. So this right here is your mRNA, and this right here would be your amino acid. So for each of these going across. Series 1 represents three mRNA codons. Series 2 includes a mutation of series 1. How would the amino acid sequence produced by the mutant strand series 2 compared to that of series 1? So remember that amino acids are read in groups of 3. UCG AG. Okay, so this sequence and this sequence is the same. So that's going to produce the same amino acid, but these are different. So this would be a different amino acid. So we go down here, so one amino acid in the sequence would change. Okay, we are back to some gel electrophoresis questions. We have four wells. Here's the negative, here's the positive. Remember the samples always get put in at the negative. Okay. Then the electric current is applied and the smaller ones move the furthest. So gel electrophoresis. The arrow represents the direction of the movement of the DNA fragments. What is responsible for the movement of the DNA in this process? And that is DNA, this is helpful, is negative. So DNA is negative, therefore it moves toward the positive. Because remember, opposites attract like repels. And to help you remember that DNA is negative, you can like do, you can circle the N, N, negative, DNA, negative. The four samples of DNA were taken from four different individuals. Explain how this is evident from the results shown in the diagram. So basically this is individual one, two, three, and four. When we compare these, okay, none of the banding patterns are the same. One is different from two, from three and four, two is different from one, three, and four, three is different from one, two, and four, and four is different from one, two, and three. So none of the bands are identical. Identify the substance that was used to treat the DNA to produce the fragments. What made the DNA into fragments? It's saying what cut it. So restriction enzyme. Have to know restriction enzymes cut DNA. All right, last page. Well, almost the last page. Which two species are most closely related? So you're going to use the branching trees, okay? Letters A through L represent different species of organisms, and the arrows show the long periods of geologic time. So which are most closely related? J and L? I don't think so. They come from different branches. G and L? No, definitely not. F and H? different branches. F and G, there we go, they come from, both come from D. Which species was best adapted to the changes that occurred in its environment over the longest period of time? Well, A started here and only made it to here. B started way down here and continued and still exists today, so there you go. Let's check out C. C is only in one spot, and J is only in one spot. Which two species would most likely show the greatest similarity of DNA and proteins? 
which two species would most likely show the greatest similarity of DNA and proteins? B and J, they're close together. G and I, they're in separate branches. J and K, they're in separate branches. And F and L, F and L, F and, well, they're definitely, so B and J are the closest. Read through all your choices before you select an answer. All right, based on their analysis of differences in amino acid sequences of one kind of protein, scientists prepared the evolutionary tree shown below. According to this diagram, the DNA of which pair of organisms would show the greatest similarity? So let's see where the penguin and turtle are. Penguin and turtle. Okay, they're fairly close. Horse and donkey. Hmm. Well, Penguin and turtle both came off the pigeon, but horse and donkey definitely are closely related because they came from the same split. Snake and tuna. Snake, tuna. Very long line here. Turtle and rabbit. Well, they're not even anywhere near each other. So I would have to say, based on the shortness of the lines and their close proximity, it would be the horse and the donkey. Older systems of classification always placed penguin, chicken, ducks, and pigeons in the bird group and turtles and snakes in the reptile group. Does this diagram support the older system? So let's look penguins, chickens, ducks, and pigeons. Penguins, chicken, ducks, and pigeons. Penguins, chickens, ducks, and pigeons. And bird group, and then turtles and snakes in the reptile. Turtle, where's snake? No. So this does not support that. So no, it actually places the turtle closer to the birds than the snake. According to this diagram, is the pig more closely related to the dog or the kangaroo? Is the pig more closely related to the dog or the kangaroo? So here's pig, here's dog, here's kangaroo. Well, pig is more closely related to the dog. We can see that. So um, pig is more closely related to the dog because they are closer on the diagram. And that's all you have to say. And that concludes the Biodiversity Lab Review. Remember, please study this packet and study the boot camp packet. I will be in my room Tuesday morning if you want last minute review, if you want to come in on the early bus. You have to be at the school by 12 noon. You guys got this. I'm so proud of all of you. And let's pass this Regents!